Hello everybody, how are you doing? This is a video all about Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program. So many of you were asking for it. So here's a video all about MPNP. To set the expectations right in the beginning of the video, let me tell you all the points that I'm going to cover in this video. So I'm going to tell you about the highlights and the overview of the MPNP program. I'll tell you about the eligibility criteria. I'll walk you through the points table as well. And I'll also tell you about the documents which are required. Last but very important point, I'll tell you about the MPNP renewal as well. So basically almost everything that you need to know about the MPNP program. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hey guys, this is Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and I regularly upload Canadian immigration and lifestyle videos. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please click the subscribe button and press that bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos. Okay, so let's start with the highlights of the MPNP program. So you'd be glad to know that the government of Manitoba projects a labor shortage of over 20,000 skilled workers by next year. So, of course, it is a good news for you because they are scaling up their immigration. Did you know that Manitoba was the first Canadian province to establish its own immigration program, the MPNP program? Okay, now let's discuss some interesting statistics. 85% of Manitoba nominees were working three months after arrival. 76% were homeowners within five years and 95% of the families settled permanently in the community. So which means that there are many jobs, there are many employment opportunities over there, which also means that uh, the salaries are really good. So they were able to buy a home within first five years and which also means that the government and the society is very cooperative and supportive over there. Okay, apart from this, you might be aware that Manitoba has issued more than 6,000 invitations in the year 2019 so far. So we are in September, they've already issued more than 6,000 invitations and uh, maybe there are many more coming in. Okay, now let's talk about the different streams. So there are different streams. Uh, you can actually sum them up to two streams. The first one is skilled workers and the second one is business investor stream. So the skilled worker stream has got two sub streams or two pathways. Uh, the skilled workers in Manitoba and the skilled workers overseas. So skilled workers in Manitoba is basically for those people who are who have an ongoing employment in Manitoba or who have a job offer after immigrating from a uh, university or college in Manitoba. And skilled worker overseas is basically for those people who are living abroad. So let's say you're living in India. So Manitoba is basically searching for all of those skilled workers who are actually interested uh, in uh, living in Manitoba and living there for long. So they are looking for those people who have a strong connection with Manitoba. We'll come into the details, we'll discuss the details later on in this video. Then in the business investor stream, the first one is the entrepreneur pathway and the second one is the farm investor pathway. So I know that most of my subscribers, most of my viewers would be interested in uh, the skilled worker overseas category. So I will discuss about uh, this particular category in detail in this video. Okay, now let's talk about the step-by-step -step process for uh, MPNP. So first of all, you have to submit an expression of interest. So once you submit an expression of interest, basically it's a form which you have to submit in their website. So they'll ask a number of details uh, over there. You have to fill it. And then based on their points table, you'll actually be assigned some score. So you'll have a score that would be totally different from the express entry score. So it would be a score based on their own criteria. Okay, this would be the first step. The second step would be that the highest scoring qualified candidates who have a strong connection with Manitoba are invited to submit an MPNP application. So they would be given the LAAs or letter of advice to apply. After that, you would be given 60 days to complete that application and submit it online. You would need to submit a lot of documents here, which all documents I'll discuss later in this video. Now, after that, following a thorough assessment, the MPNP nominates successful candidates to make a separate application to the government of 
Canada for the permanent residency. So basically these would be the four steps involved if you want to apply for any stream of MPNP. Okay, now let's talk about uh, the eligibility who cannot apply to the MPNP. So refugee claimants or individuals involved in a federal appeal or removal process. Live-in caregivers currently living in Canada, they can't apply. Temporary foreign workers currently working and residing in a province other than Manitoba. So all those people can't apply, please note. Spouses of Canadian citizens or permanent residents, they can't apply. Individuals who have been refused by the MPNP within the last six months and who are not able to address the reasons for refusal, they can't apply. And lastly, individuals who have an active immigration application with any other provincial immigration program in Canada, they also cannot apply. So if you have an application running with Saskatchewan uh, or maybe uh, Ontario, in that case, you cannot apply to the MPNP. All right, now it will be interesting to discuss uh, the expression of interest ranking for uh, these skilled workers. So we've discussed the points table. So which all factors are there? Let me tell you about it first of all. By completing an expression of interest, you automatically receive a score based on a number of criteria. The highest scoring candidates in the pool will be invited on a regular basis to provide a full application to the MPNP. First factor is uh, language proficiency. The second factor is age. The third factor is work experience. The fourth one is education, then adaptability. And the last one is risk assessment. So how many points will you actually get for these different factors? Let's as directly check it in the official website of Government of Manitoba. Okay, so we are back here in the official website of Government of Manitoba and this is the points table where all those six points are mentioned with their respective points table. So the first factor is language proficiency. So if you see here, if your first official language is uh, uh, English, let's say, then you appeared for IELTS or CELPIP, you have to score CLB 8 or higher to get maximum points. So scoring CLB 8 is still easier than CLB 9, of course. So you'd score maximum points over here. So you'll get 25 points per band. So for the second official language, you'll get 25 more points if you score CLB 5 or higher. So the maximum points you can score through language proficiency is 125. If you don't appear for the French test, then still you'll be able to get uh, 100 points through this CLB 8 score. Okay, the second factor is age. Here it is quite different from the CRS table because that bracket is pretty huge here. So if you have an age between 21 to 45, you'll get maximum points. So which is a big, big bracket, right? If you're below 21 or if you're above 45, then you'll get lesser points. So most of the people, I guess, would be in this bracket, so you'll get maximum points, 75 points uh, for your age. Now talking of the work experience. So here they have mentioned about the work experience. You can read it out. I'll provide the link in the description box below. Uh, the maximum points you'll get for four years or more of work experience. And if you are fully recognized by provincial licensing body, then you'll get 100 more points, which makes the maximum points uh, for the work experience equal to 175. Okay, now talking of education. So similar to the CRS score, you'll get the maximum points if uh, you have a master's degree or doctorate. So you'll get 125 here. Then if you have two post-secondary programs of at least two years each, then you'll get 115 and respectively. So the maximum points here you can get is 125. And of course, it depends on your educational qualification. Okay, now the next one is adaptability. Now this is very important when it comes to Manitoba because adaptability points are calculated based on the type of connection you have to Manitoba. All candidates must have at least one type of connection to Manitoba. So this is a very important factor here, the fifth factor, adaptability. You cannot be rewarded points for more than one connection factor. You'll be only scored based on your connection which gives you the highest score. So let's go on to read this out. Uh, if you have a close relative in Manitoba, then you'll get 200 points. Now I'll tell you the definition of a close relative 
it is very confusing and you have to prove that relationship as well so i'll tell you which all relationships are actually considered as close relatives uh, previous authorized work experience in manitoba if six months or more then you'll get 100 points so the best part is that uh, you'll get 200 points if you have a close relative in manitoba um, if you have an ongoing employment in manitoba for six months or more then you'll get 500 points and uh, if you have invitation to apply under a strategic initiative then you'll get 500 points more and similarly this is one for a regional development so you'll maximum points you'll get is 500 and of course that is a huge number so the sixth factor is risk assessment and here this is something quite different from other scoring tables because this is something in negative so your points will get deducted if uh, your work experience is in any other province apart from manitoba or if your studies were there were in any other province apart from manitoba in canada so in that case, uh, your uh, points will actually get deducted. Up to 200 points can get deducted. So this is the points table and uh, I'll provide the link in the description box. Let me tell you the definition of a close relative in Manitoba and how you can actually prove it. Okay, close relatives are considered to be those related to the applicant or the applicant's spouse in one of the following ways, sister or brother, niece or nephew, aunt or uncle, first cousin, mother or father and grandmother or a grandfather please note that for close relatives both the applicants and the supporter must provide documents proving their familial relationship so it is very important to prove your relationship as well so to check out the list of documents we are back again in that website and again i'll provide you the link for the list of documents in the description box you can check it out uh, let me quickly walk you through that list so for personal information you need to provide your birth certificate and uh, you need to provide your passport to your marriage and divorce or death certificates uh, you need to provide the birth certificates of your dependent uh, children as well for education uh, you need to provide documents substantiating the claims you made in your eoi so for example if you say that if you completed high school or and university you must upload transcripts and a certificate for high school and transcripts and a certificate for university okay so wes is not required at this stage here okay now talking of employment then uh, you must provide the reference letters it should definitely mention uh, the details of the employers and your employments as mentioned over here you should also uh, provide the immigration history and status and you should also provide the language ability documents so if you actually uh, passed the IELTS you should provide the IELTS certificate apart from this you should also provide the settlement funds uh, or the proof of funds the proof for that so all applicants should have uh, at least 10,000 Canadian dollars plus 2,000 Canadian dollars for a spouse and each accompanying dependent so if you are a couple then you should have at least 12,000 and if you are a uh, if you have a kid as well then you should have a 14,000 minimum uh, in your account so this is something which is also very important apart from this you need to have a settlement plan so what is a settlement plan it is a part of uh, MPM NP online where all applicants uh, explain why they chose Manitoba as their uh, immigration destination and how they plan to settle in the community so this is a kind of an explanation a roadmap that you have to provide uh, there's a link you can go and check it out as well so basically these are all the uh, documents that you need to provide uh, also you uh, this is an online application so uh, you should actually provide those all those uh, documents in a PDF file which is, should be less than 2 MB talk about something which is uh, very crucial which is going to be very crucial in the near future because we're going to talk about MPNP renewal okay so we are here in the official website of government of manitoba and this is about mpnp renewals so what is this mpnp renewal so basically they are restructuring the complete streams and the pathways of the mpnp program so the government of canada and manitoba have reached an agreement on the renewal of uh, this mpnp based on their economic competitiveness and other factors so now going forward there would be actually four different streams 
the first one would be the international education stream the second one would be business investor stream the third one being the skilled work in manitoba stream and the last one is uh, the skilled worker overseas stream so i won't talk about all of them in detail i will just talk about this uh, skilled workers overseas stream and now there would be an in demand occupation list as well so we will talk about this list in a while uh, so let's talk about this skilled worker overseas stream i'll provide a link basically to all of this in the description box so you can also go and check it out but i'll quickly walk you through this so there'll be two different pathways the first one would be uh, manitoba express entry pathway the second one would be the human capital pathway so the first one is basically for those people who have a strong family connection to manitoba uh, and have got the skills uh, to work in manitoba apart from that they do have the express entry profile and active express entry profile as well so this is very important for the first one for the second one uh, they don't need an active express entry profile so basically the first one would be a lot faster the second one would be a bit slower so here we will go on to discuss the in demand list as well so here's a big list which is uh, which is available over there uh, you can go on to check this list in detail so all of uh, these in demand occupation list will have a uh, different NOC codes mentioned under it so if you have your uh, NOC code in there then you can go on to apply you know when this uh, uh, this particular pathway will be applicable okay then talking about this uh, particular express entry pathway then they've uh, listed out a few very important points over here the minimum eligibility requirements so you should have an uh, active express entry profile you should have a minimum six uh, months of work experience uh, you should have a minimum of um, CLB 6 for NOC B and uh, CLB 7 for NOC A. They have certain requirements uh, for education, age, adaptability, settlement funds, which is very important. So all of this is uh, very important. These are all the eligibility criteria. They're also mentioned for uh, the human capital uh, pathway as well. So I'll provide the link to all of this, uh, all of these uh, web pages in the description box if you're interested you can go and check it out okay thanks a lot for watching this video i hope that you liked the video and the information shared in this video was helpful to you if that's the case please click the thumbs up button if not you can click the thumbs down button as well and also if you haven't subscribed my channel yet please click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video thanks again